Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, This week, we are talking about retirement, about the three different ways that you can step out of your company uh, and still continue making money from the company, right? How do you exit a company in the construction industry? Uh, And what exactly are are the hurdles there? What do you struggle with? Uh, This week, uh, sitting in for Jared, we've got a special guest. Uh, his name is Ryan. Uh, Ryan is one of our coaches. Uh, he's with Encorp, which is their coaching company. Uh, but Ryan actually coaches with ProServe Alliance on our platform. Uh, he takes all of our curriculum, everything that we teach, and he really, uh, him and his brothers, which he'll explain in a moment, uh, will get into, into exactly how they coach and, and, and their setup. But they really help our contractors understand processes, procedures, uh, and get on the on the ground level in the weeds uh, to help our contractors grow to the next level. So thank you for joining us, Ryan. I appreciate you uh, making the time for us. Absolutely, man. It's a heck of an introduction. Thanks. <laughs> and he's an amazing, handsome man. If you go to the video, he's awesome. So uh, what we're talking about today is uh, we brought Ryan on because he has also uh, exited a company. So there's three different ways that we're going to start talking about uh, uh, the exits. Uh, and then we'll kind of name who's done what, right? And, and we'll talk about that and, and kind of have uh, Ryan the expert on one way, me, me the expert on the other way. Uh, so three different ways of exiting a company. Uh, number one, uh, you can ne- nest away enough money throughout the 30, 40, 50 years that you're doing renovations to be able to retire, right? You, uh, I've, I'm putting away- Go to the beach, have a checking account. Yep, you know, I've- be good. I've, I've nested away a million dollars over the last 50 years and I can close my company down and I can live off that money. Uh, I do not like that strategy. Um, the, uh, the reason I don't like that strategy is you don't know how long you're going to live and you don't know how much money you're going to need. You don't know what the future is going to look like with inflation and with other needs that might come up. Right. And so uh, you're really a race against the clock with the money that you've got left. Um, but that's one, one exit strategy. And honestly, that's, I would say, the majority of contractors strategy. Uh, they, they, there's a dream to sell, there's a dream to step out and retire. But I would say the majority of contractors have the strategy of I'm just going to put money away so I can stop working by the time I'm 65. Uh, what, well, it's what do you also think like the most, the most standard thought process too. like you're, you're raised, you know, from the beginning to think yep. that way. You know, yeah. I stop working, and then I have a bank account. And I just kind of chill out for the rest of my life, whatever that may or may not be. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's an employee, it's an employee mindset, right? I'm going to put away my right. 401k until I can have enough money nestled away to not work anymore. So that's, that's one strategy. Uh, we're not going to get too much into that because that's very basic and, and people understand that the other two exits of, of a construction company, uh, the ways to retire one way is to uh, sell the company, right? Build something of value and sell it to somebody else to continue to run. Uh, When you, when you have finished it, that could be in retirement. That can be in your twenties. That could be whenever you've built something worth value uh, and selling it. Uh, And then the other strategy is to build it up to a spot to be able to step out and continue receiving funds from it uh, to where it continues to run, whether you uh, put someone in charge of it, you pass it down to a, a son or daughter, you pass it to a brother. Uh, and so those are the two spots we're going to live today in. Uh, the first way, uh, selling the company, Ryan and his brothers will tell you a little bit about what, what they've done, uh, but we're going to start there. So uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about your uh, general contracting company, kind of how it got started and why you decided to sell. Well, so it's actually a really simple story it's it's like what most people are i mean we have three brothers in the company one brother started it it started out as a landscape company then you grow into remodels then you grow into general contracting and project management and you know each brother has joined up and now there's three of us we knew we were going to end up selling our general contracting company at some point because we knew that we have a heart for teaching and coaching to help the other contractors grow, expand, become bigger, better. And so when the option came up to sell our 
company. We actually sold it as a division and we did some quick restructuring. We worked with the GC that was buying it. And then we did what I would call an unusual sale. Okay. And I think what most people think about selling their company or their contracting business, they look at it from a, a, a very singular perspective of, I have this company, I will sell it to you for this money or this residual, and then I do nothing. Yeah. I, I go on the beach now. Yeah. And there's so much flexibility in how you can actually sell an asset. So for instance, we didn't end up selling our entire company we put our GC and project management uh, into a division. And then we sold that division of our company. And we also structured that much differently than what you normally would. You know, when you value a company, you're looking at, you know, either the SDE multiple, the EBITDA multiple, or the assets multiple. Mm -hmm. Well, when you sell a division, you're not necessarily, you have to do all that, like with the register with SEC and securities and file change of ownership in your state. Each state's a little bit different, so I'm not going to get like way into the details there. That's something you have to do in your own area. Sure. But and that's and that's kind of what we did. We sold our that division to the GC. Our staff that worked in that area, he hired. You know, the processes and stuff we had uh, went with them. Yeah. The book of business went with them. Uh, so what, what started, what was the, did y'all start the company and run, build the company with the mindset of always selling, or was there a spot right before you sold where it was like, Hey, we got an offer. What's, Oh wait, maybe we should do this. Like what, what was the mindset of, of building that direction? Yeah, we, we didn't really ever plan on selling. Uh, it was something that was, we just thought we were going to work until we, retired right we're gonna have yeah. money in the bank we're gonna go to the beach someday and um what happened is we ended up meeting uh, a bunch of different people in a bunch of different places that needed a bunch of different things and some coaching and some teaching and when we started doing that we realized that this is really what we want to do yeah. and of course we loved loved general contracting and project management sure. it was fun it was chaotic and there was always something to do but we kind of knew, oh, towards the beginning of 2021 that we were probably going to end up selling it. And we had started yep. pivoting that direction. When the GC came in with the offer or the ask towards the middle of 2021, we were not expecting that. We were not ready for that, but we got there with a quickness. And then we actually exited that division in December of 21. Okay. So, cool. but yeah, we weren't, we weren't planning on it initially. If yeah. we had, if we had known we were going to sell it, or if we had thought about it, I think there's some things we would have structured differently. And there's, I'm happy to share those because those are the pains, yeah. but we definitely would have structured some stuff differently and put together plans, details, structures yeah. differently for sure. Cool. Well, well, let's, let's talk about them in a second, because I think whatever strategy you're going for, for your exit of your company I think it's it, it all starts out in the same spot. And then making the final decision we'll talk about in a second is really what's best for you, right? And so uh, let's, going on to the other way, the way that, that, that I, I exited my company, um, and we'll talk about kind of pros and cons of both as well, right? And so the way that I exited, we, we built it up. Um, I, I wanted to, like you, uh, I really enjoy coaching, helping, I enjoy building companies. I don't necessarily have a huge passion for putting sheetrock on a wall. Uh, and so for me, it was always, I did construction because I knew it and I was good at it and could handle it. But I, my long-term goal, if you said, hey, Clark, you got endless amount of money. You got to do something for a job. What would you do for free? It would be helping guys build our companies, right? And so for me, it was like, that's, that's my, where I want to be. And so we structured ProServe Home Solutions, our general contracting company in Atlanta, to where I, I grew it and brought in a, some project managers. One of the project managers uh, was Jared, uh, and then we brought in another one um, named James. He, he grew up in the company, was here for five, six, seven years, uh, went, turn, came into our head of renovations. Uh, so he got promoted to be managing all of our project managers. 
Uh, and then uh, a few years ago, I looked at, uh, I, I said, listen, you're better at this than I am. You're better at, at, at managing the clients. You're better at the detail side of writing estimates and communication, all that stuff. So I, I brought him in as the general manager uh, worked him into that job and slowly stepped away. And so it was, it was kind of a transitional move, but I, uh, the hard part is I am, I am making X amount of dollars managing the company and I've got to pay a certain percentage of that to him to, or somebody to manage the company anyway. So for me to step out, I'm making less money than I was. So you have to get to a certain uh, financial spot with the company to where it's making enough to, uh, to be able to, withhold a, an additional large paycheck for someone who's running the company. Uh, and then I stepped out uh, and now I, I am uh, hands-off management, I would say. So I, I meet with James once a week, once every other week. Um, but uh, you know, that's, that's kind of was my strategy. The goal is to be able to step further, further away uh, as people in the company step up into more leadership. Um, but it allows me to now pursue my passions, uh, do a lot more things with my family, vacations, or, or you know, being at school events, uh, and I'm not in the day to day of running that company. But that's that was that was my exit strategy, and honestly, we're still in the middle of it. I mean, I'm not totally retired. I get pulled back in all the time. That's uh, getting into the negatives of both both strategies. I, I think that's the the part that has been the the biggest negative for us is that whenever we have some sort of issue or crisis at the office in the construction company. I get pulled pulled right back in, right? We had an office manager that we let go, uh, and then a project manager that uh, left for another job, and then another project manager that we had to let go. So, in a matter of a month, we lost three employees, which left a big gap in people doing work. So, again, I'm now sucked back in at that moment until we get the, uh, one or two of those people replaced. To help carry the load, so that's that's the negative side of stepping out because you're never all, always out, right? You're you're always getting sucked back in. Uh, what what are some of the negatives of, of selling the company that that you've that you have experienced? I think I think people really underestimate how emotionally attached they are to their companies. Yeah. There's there's something to be said for building something, and then when that moment comes and you realize you have to let that go that's mm -hmm. always hard yeah. and when you sell a company it can't be emotional yeah you have to you have to deal with the, the facts and the numbers and that's what they are like and another another negative is when you sell something like we structured ours slightly different than the normal but you know the normal was part of the consideration yeah. when you sell something you have to be willing to let someone change stuff after it's not yours yep yep you can't go running back in there and be like that's not how we do it you know, yep. that's not how it works it's like yep. it's not yours yeah <laughs> let yeah. it go i uh so i have i'm wearing the shirt today pro serve heating and air uh was nice. a division of our company um in uh atlanta uh we we started that I, i'd built that up within our company as a division uh, kind of opposite of what you did. You you went from a company and kind of made it into a division to sell. I had a division that was our heating and air division. Uh, and I I actually separated it out and made it its own company and sold off that as a as its own company, right? And so um, right. for uh, very similar to your situation in terms of uh, I sold it off. I'm, I'm still a, a part owner. I sold off 80% ownership in that company, but I'm still 20% owner. Uh, so there's still... Uh, a tie to it in terms of uh, phone calls. And actually they, they're still in pro serve Alliance. They, we, we do coaching and uh, they come on retreats and, and that sort of thing. But I say all that because it is, it, it is tough because no one's going to love your baby as much as you um, right. until, uh, and then as it becomes ugly their, as it may be. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, and then it becomes their baby and you're like, okay, that's okay. That's yours now. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's a, uh, it's like losing a, a an ex-girlfriend, like, it's the right thing to do, but it's, I still miss it sometimes. Right. So it's, it, it's tough on that side of it. And I think one of the, one of the other sides of that too, is, um, you know, for me, the guy that bought it was the guy running it. I, I brought him in. He, he kind of went from a service tech all the way up to running the company. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, he has a bigger passion for it than I do, which has been super helpful. Uh, he's really good at it. Uh, and he, he bleeds pro serve blue, as he says, 
uh, because he just loves, he loves building that company and, and HVAC. So it was a good situation, but um, yeah, it's tough be, because it's like, all right, I spent all this time and effort and now that's going to somebody else's hands. So I like the fact that you sold someone inside yeah, because now you know that someone actually cares about it, you know, yep. not that I'm saying like the, the GC who bought our division sure. didn't care about it, but he had his own ways of doing it. Sure. And if I could take it, I think in the future, when I sell off another company or another division, I think I'm going to give the people who run that first shot. If that makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. Like, just for my own emotional sake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's, let's get into, those are kind of our stories. Those are the different ways to, to do it. All of that said, as a con, contractor cuts, helping contractors grow their company, what should contractors be doing today to start prepping for either one of those exits, whether it's a sale or whether it's, it's stepping out of the company, where do we start? I'm, I'm a guy, I'm a contractor running my, my company. What is the first thing I should, I should be doing right now to start preparing for that, whether it's five years from now, 10 years from now, 30 years from now, what should I be doing today? You need to be recording everything. Yep. And what I, what I mean by that is, is like every process that you use, every, uh, everything you have your employees do, everything you do, everything needs to be written down. Yep. Everything. Everything. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, like, like, I can't overstate how important that is. Yeah. So many contracting companies get bound up in the owner, right? Yep. Or the yep. person who's running it. And you build, I call it a personality-based business, right? So if you build a business around you, yeah. the personality, the owner, that actually drives the value of the company down if yep. you don't go with the company. Yeah, there's no exit there. You are the company. Yeah. It's it's you. Yeah. You're the company. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's so, right on. Always, always, always record everything in yeah. terms of how you do stuff. Yeah. That's one one of the, the first things that I realized when stepping out of my company too, when it comes to what you're talking about, is it was a really awesome feeling and a really scary feeling at the same time was. I am stepping out and every single client in this company <clears throat> doesn't know who I am. And that's a great thing, but it's also a hard thing, right? Like mm. I, I was the guy that everyone knew and that if things went, went wrong, I was, I was Superman coming in to handle it. And now you ask someone who, who uh, pro serves renovating their house right now, they don't know who Clark is. They've never heard of me. Right. And so it was, how did we get, that's, that's the most important thing. That's also hard, but, but to get there, is, you're exactly right. All of the written processes, and that's really where we, how we founded ProServe Alliance. We take our processes that we've written and we implement them into companies. And we say, okay, here is exactly how we did it. And this is what we use to be able to duplicate ourselves, take all of this. And then, we, and then you sit with someone like Ryan and you customize that into how your company fits best. Everyone has different personalities. Everyone has different, what, what we call, uh, like the, the, the magic sauce that, that people choose you for. Uh, and so we take all of our processes and you sit with coaches like Ryan and his brothers and you, and you say, okay, let's customize these to you and let's build your processes so you can eventually get out of this company. Um, because no matter what, in 80 years from now, you won't be around in this company, right? And so let's set it up right. now to where the company doesn't die when you die or the company doesn't die when you go to the beach and the company doesn't die when you, even for a week when you go on vacation, right? And so that's, that's absolutely right. I mean, it's so basic, write everything down, write out your processes. But the hard part of that, I think that I've seen with guys is the process is in my brain. I am the process, mm. right? I know the process. I, I am, I just, it's this me. is how I operate. And so there's not a process. This is just what I do. Well, you operate in a process. You don't know it, but if you write down every step that you do, I can teach someone this and they can come in and say, okay, this is okay. I don't do it that way, but yeah, I can do it that way. And I can do it that way. And that's how you duplicate yourself. That's how they learn to do things your way, the way the company has gotten successful. Um, so I, I think you're absolutely right on, on sitting down, writing everything out, documenting it. Um, no matter what exit you want, no matter what strategy you want to build around, it's very important to start there. Something else that we yeah, do. I have a, 
Go ahead. I have a really basic litmus test that yeah. I talk to my clients about to figure out if your company is ready to, if, you're, if your company is ready for you to exit in any way, shape, or form. Yep. My, my litmus test is if you can take a two-week vacation without your laptop and without your phone, and you come back and everything is, you know, mostly okay, at least, yeah. then your company might be ready for you to, to have an exit. Yep. If you come back and everything's on fire, I'm not saying actually take the vacation. We're, we're thinking through this as a mental exercise. If you came back and everything was on fire, you're not ready to exit. Yep, absolutely. It's it's like the uh, a gigantic trust fall. <laughs> like I hope this yeah. works. Here we go. Yeah, it's. I, I think that's right. If you if if I mean you're going to answer one phone call in the middle of the week, but if you can go on vacation for a week to two weeks and you know it's running well without with you without you there. You're absolutely right. You, you've you created the processes that other people are, are duplicating. And then you start hiring people that are better at the things that you're bad at. So they've got your process and then the things that you're bad at, they're filling in, right? And so, like I said, James, who I hired that, that runs our company, he is a better general manager than I am, right? I'm okay with that. And I want that. I'm not scared of that. I don't take that as a as an insult. I want to hire the best to be around me to, to keep running to where, I, co- I can't come in and swoop in and do his job better than him. He's better than me at it now. So that's there's no the- room for ego when you own a business. No, there, no there, there's not enough room in your business for your business and your ego. You have yep. to pick one. Yep. Well, I appreciate you joining us today. Let's, you know, if you guys are listening to this and you're thinking about how I'm going to retire, what I want to do uh, next, what do I do today? Uh, I'm not even close to retiring or stepping out. So I don't care about this. Well, Start, start the process, start the process uh, of, of writing things down, building out your processes. Even if you're still swinging a hammer, you're a one man show out there. Uh, let's figure out how to get you eventually out of the truck and running your company uh, and duplicating yourself. Uh, we do trainings all the time. We've got an event at the end of this month. Uh, we would love to see you at it. Ryan and, and the Encorp team are actually hosting the event. Uh, Jared and I will be at the event. Uh, as, as the speakers, we're going to give everybody at the event our, our 10 step process of project management. It's the most, we've got four different processes. The project management process is the most important one that we teach. And it's where we start. Uh, Ryan knows the process. He's, he, he's gone through it. Uh, and, and he's really going to be your guide in the process, uh, in your company. Um, but we'd love to see you there. It's one of those events, like there is a lot of information. Uh, and so it's, it's a drink. Lot. <laughs> it's drinking from a fire hose, which is fantastic. Uh, if you want to come in and attend, you don't have to sign up for anything. It's a one-time event. You, you pay the $200 to come. Uh, there's no forced sales of sign up for Alliance. And we'll see, like, we are here for the guys that want to be a part of Alliance. If you want to just come and get some information, we're cool with that. We want that. We, we want what's best for your company. Uh, so we would love to see you there. Um, it's in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Encorp is based out of. Uh, so if you're in the Midwest and can make it by driving, great. If you're somewhere else, fly in. Um, we're it's it's a Wednesday and a Thursday, right? So it's something yep, that it's you, a Wednesday get, and Thursday. you get there Tuesday night. Uh, it's all day Wednesday, all day Thursday. It's done by four or five on Thursday. So you can fly back out Thursday night. If you want information about this, go to our website, proservalliance.com. There is events uh, section on the website and you can go in, check out the event. If you want to talk to me, you want to talk to Ryan, uh, and need any other information or just want to hear more, uh, absolutely go to our website and, and connect with us there. Um, and uh, we'd love to talk with you. Love to chat with you about your exit on your company. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you it. You are. Uh, excited, awesome. welcome. Excited about hanging out with you, uh, you get, and, and all, all your people out there in Tulsa at the end of the month. Uh, and everyone, thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week.